Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to progress your account quickly in Infinity Kingdom. What's going on guys, cheers. So as you guys know, the Contention of Legends event is underway and I thought it was important for me to make a video telling you guys how you can progress your Infinity Kingdom account faster. So as you can see here, I'm on my main account, I'm castle level 37, we're close to that end game cap of 40, and I've learned quite a bit in my few months playing Infinity Kingdom and I figured it's time to just tell you guys, hey, if you're a brand new player, there are definitely some things you should be doing to become stronger much faster. But before we jump into the tips, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the contention of legends event now as you can see here this is my official alliance we went with the name omni guard so the tag is og now at the beginning of the server we were a top five alliance but as you can see the power of red has exploded in the last couple of days so my alliance and the entire blue faction of idvia needs as many people as possible to help us fight this war let me know over on discord when you join server 97 so that way we can figure out where is the best place for you now if you look at the map here when it comes to where my alliance is generally located the strategy so far has been to actually stay at least least 30 kilometers apart from each other because I don't know if you've seen this before but if you are organized around a particular city and everybody goes offline essentially all you're doing is serving the enemy a free a bunch of free kills on a silver platter okay it's not a great strategy unless you have members online who can defend you at all times which has been a very big opportunity for us given the fact that it seems we are severely outnumbered at the moment but it hasn't all been negative okay we have had a lot of great success with allying with a lot of really great alliances not only in the blue faction but some members of the green faction as well which is going to be really important if either of us want a chance to defeat red in the contention of relics events moving forward the plan is going to be simply just take a single city at a time and try and hold that city down so we can level it up which makes it more difficult for the enemy to take back there's no point in trading uh, cities back and forth because really then you're just losing troops for no reason and of course we have had some cities success taking a handful of cities here in server 97 although again it has proved really difficult to keep those cities for a long period of time and the last thing I want to mention before we get into the tips is that if you enjoy infinity kingdom content make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that thumbs up button it really helps out a ton and without further ado let's jump into it so the first tip I want to give you guys is super important for the contention of legends event but it's also equally as important in any other server so it doesn't matter when you start playing this game what server you play whether you're watching this video in six months or in two years this is going to be the most important tip and that is join a super active alliance now of course for the contention of legends event i will be having my own alliance so as long as there is room in that alliance and you join that server you are more than welcome to join my alliance and play with me and reap the benefits of that community now joining an alliance has a ton of benefits but arguably the most important is the alliance help feature as you can see here i'm upgrading my quarry and i was able to gain a certain amount of helps from my alliance what this means is when you begin an upgrade on a particular building or you start a particular research you're able to ask for help from your alliance at that point other members that are logged in can press the help button and it will reduce the amount of time it takes for that upgrade to take place so it's literally a free way to make faster progression in the game and that's why it's important to join a large alliance with a lot of active players because then when you need those helps they're online and they're there to get you the higher your castle level the more helps you're going to be able to get so focusing on upgrading your castle first is going to be crucial not just for this reason but for many other reasons and that's not all the alliance is also a community of people that you can talk to there's an alliance chat so if you need to learn something about the game or if you just want to talk to people make some friends it's a game you're supposed to be having fun right uh, join the Alliance and join a community the communities that you meet along the way are really what keep you playing these types of games because you really will meet some really cool people now beyond that you do also gain the benefit of Alliance technology right there's a ton of different technology in here some of these things will increase your rally speed your attack the number of Alliance members that are going to be able to join to help you right there's tons of important things in here and all of this stuff you know if you're not not an alliance you're missing out on this stuff i mean look at this i have 18 percent shield bin hp 
just because I'm in an alliance, I didn't do anything right now. Of course you will have to donate some of your resources, but the amount that you donate is very small in comparison to the benefits that you're going to get from all the stuff that's here. You also gain access to the Alliance shop, which is going to give you access to immortal fragments and a ton of other stuff. That's super important, especially the contract builder, which we're going to talk a little bit later in a minute, but this is a free way for you to get more contract builders, which only last for a day. You also get the territory tax. So you literally get free resources by being in an Alliance. These resources are more than what you're going to be spending on technology in many cases, especially in the later game. So just by being here, you're going to get, you're going to get to claim these resources for free. As long as your Alliance does hold some cities on the map. And finally, if you're in an alliance with players that are actually spending money, uh, you're going to be able to get a ton of free stuff whenever they make a bundle purchase that includes an alliance gift, right? So you can see here, these players are all players in my alliance that made purchases, daily purchases, daily bundles, right? So there's a lot to love about this stuff and you're really just benefiting off of other people making purchases. So it's completely free to you. So as you can see, there are a million good reasons to be in an active alliance. So obviously I went on long enough about this, but to Tip number one is the most important. Let's move on to tip number two, which is all about maximizing the efficiency of your time invested into this game. As with pretty much every strategy game like infinity kingdom, there's a lot of timers here that you have to wait for, especially when you get to the mid and late game, they are going to be a few days worth of timers for some of these buildings, some of these researches, etc. And the most important part is that you're being as efficient as you can with maximizing your time. So what do I mean by this? Well, you can see here on the left side that I have all three of my builders doing something right. They're building something, whether it's an important structure or not, they're building because eventually I'm going to want to level up that particular building. You can see over here, my research is going, I've got eight hours left on this research as well. Uh, and being efficient means that all of your builders, your research, your troop training, your healing, all of this stuff should be going all of the time that like, unless you've maxed out buildings, you should have all three builders building at all times Now you might be saying on how do you have three builders? So when you first start the game, you're going to have one builder permanently, just all the time. You're also going to have a second builder that you can get from contract builders, which I don't think I have any more items of them because I used one today, uh, but you'll have that second one. And I think you get a few of the contract builders, uh, items for free at the beginning of the game. If you run out of them, you can either buy them for gems or you can buy them. I think it's 90 gems, or you can buy them again for free in the Alliance shop for, I think it's 1800. Yeah. 1800. And you do have to be a alliance level before that becomes available to you i believe and beyond that you can unlock a third builder by purchasing a very cheap bundle i think it's like five dollars or something like that you unlock a permanent builder queue beyond the permanent one that you already start with so if you buy the bundle you'll have two permanent builders all the time and then you can get a third with the contract builders or if you don't buy the bundle you can just buy the contract builders on each day it's up to you what you want to go for if you're free to play obviously don't worry about it you'll just use the contract builder items. Uh, but I do think that the permanent builder is probably the most valuable, uh, bundle that you could purchase right in the game for $5. So it effectively, if you want to think of it this way, it effectively doubles your building speed, right? Just by having another builder, you can do two things at the same time. So super valuable. You're going to have it for the rest of the game. Very, very good investment, but that's not all right. Because you do have the trove over here and the trove is responsible for opening these dragon chests, which you do eventually get from defeating gnome bosses. Right. And you don't have to worry about that right now if you're a new player don't worry about that but eventually you're gonna have to open these dragon chests and they do take some time if you don't have any keys right so you want to make sure that there's always a chest being opened you also want to make sure that there's always a dragon being upgraded because dragons on the later levels take a long time we're talking like a week or more to uh to level up some of these dragon. Well, not not uh, not a full week actually i think this one was like five days and some change something along those lines but regardless it takes a long time right so you, you never want the dragon cave to be doing nothing right you don't want it to just be sitting there doing nothing you always want something to be upgrading right if you've recently upgraded your wall there's probably going to be some fortifications that are going to take some time so you always want to make sure that those fortifications are being crafted as well 
Same thing goes for the hospital. If you have troops that are wounded, which you probably will, uh, because you'll be fighting gnomes in the, in the, uh, you know, out in the world, you're going to want to heal those down and also train up more troops. Now you might be thinking, I'm New York. Why aren't you training shieldmen? I have enough shieldmen. I don't need any of them, honestly, for my strongest March. Now, if you've maximized the efficiency of all of these timers, right? You've maximized all the helps you can get from your Alliance. There's still a few other resources that you want to make sure you're managing effectively. The next few resources we're going to be talking about mainly have to do with your troops and how you're going to be using them out in the world. Okay. The first resource we're going to talk about is AP and I'm, I'm being a little bit hypocritical here. Okay. Because my AP is overflowing at this point. I have 2,800 out of 1400, but it's incredibly important, incredibly important that you spend this down every single chance that you get the way that you use your AP is to attack the gnomes and the gnome bosses and you know, cities, things like that out in the world, right? Attacking any of these, uh, any of the PVE content, right? It's going to cost AP. And the reason that you want to spend this AP down as much as possible is because it regenerates over time. Now there are some items that you can use to instantly regenerate it. If you want to spend a lot of time grinding, right? But you want to save those items for events like the double rewards event and things of that nature, or maybe the contention of relics, right? Some instances where it's important to spend a ton of AP in a small amount of time so mainly what you're going to do is spend the ap that you would generate throughout the day as you're just maybe not logged in you're off you're at work you're at school whatever your ap is regenerating if your ap is capped then you're not getting ap over time which means you're missing out on the resources you could be getting or the benefit you could be getting from using that ap so you want to make sure that if you're going to go offline that all of your ap is spent down and the reason for that again is because look at all these rewards that you get from attacking gnomes out in the field or attacking the gnome bosses right the gnome bosses are important this is how you're going to get the dragon chests okay so there's these cost a decent amount of uh, of ap to attack right 112 and then if you want to do extra damage you can spend some more but spending your ap is going to get you look free speed ups free resources sometimes you're going to get free gems you're going to get free um equipment for your immortals right all of this stuff is super important and if you're ignoring that then you're going to be significantly under leveled not only that but also the experience of your immortals right is super important and one of the best easiest and free ways to level up your immortals quickly is to just grind these uh, gnomes you also want to make sure that you're spending spending down the SP. Now the SP is what you're going to need in order to boost your immortals. So as you can see here, I need more of this dark gold. And the way that I can do that is through these raids that I've already beaten in the well of time. So if I go ahead and I do this raid again, I've already beaten this one. So that's why I can instantly clear it. Um, but spending this down in the top right corner, as you can see here, um, you want to spend this down every single day, because again, this is how you're able to boost your immortals is by collecting these specific resources that you can only get from the well of time. We're going to talk about the well of time in just a little bit. Uh, but the final thing that I want to mention is that if all of your builders are building, you've set up a research, you're doing your dragon cave, the trove, all that stuff, right? If, if all that's going and if you spent down all of your AP and all of your SP and pretty much you've done everything for the day, right? You've done everything. What do you do then? Well, at that point, you send out your troops to gather resources on the map. And this is what you want to do before you log out, right? Before you log out, before you go to bed, go to work, go to school, whatever, you send out your troops and you collect those resources. That way, when you're offline, everything is being done right? You're maximizing all of your time away from the game and you're maximizing all of your troops to collect more resources for when you come back, they will be there. And then you can proceed to upgrade the next building, the next research, whatever the case might be. Now this should go without saying, but you do want to log in every you know couple of hours just to collect the resources in your city, because all of these resource production buildings do have a cap for the amount that they can hold. They have a max storage, right? And so if, if they're sitting there at max storage, then you're actually missing out on the resources they could be producing. So you always want to make sure you log in grab those resources, log back out. You also do get the online time rewards as well. So of course this is a free way to get more AP some gold, some enchant stones, all that stuff is super important. So you do want to grab those. Now, the next tip I want to give you guys has to do with your academy and also your Lord talents. So first let's start with the academy. This is where you do your research. Okay. And as you can see, there are four different classes of research. There's production troops, immortals, and defense. Okay. The main ones that you're going to want to focus on are the production troops and immortals, right? Because the defense is important, but 
if if you're offline and someone's hitting your city they're going to destroy it anyway especially in the early game okay so defense you want to come back to a little bit later in my opinion but in the early game if you're a brand new pr player you want to focus on production this is the most important piece of of the research this is the most important research tree in the game why is this this is if you're focusing on this it's going to make all of your future building timers lower it's going to maximize the amount of resources you're producing while you're offline it's going to decrease the amount of time future technology researches are right you have the rapid progress here you could see it, by focusing on this first it makes all of my troops immortals and defense trees even faster to research later which means that it takes less time and also takes less speed ups if i'm going to be pushing for an important event for example it's also worth noting that this first piece of the immortal tree is important too this is the amount of experience that your immortals are going to get from combat so this is definitely one that i would recommend uh, focusing on as well same thing with boost consumption uh after that it gets to be a little bit expensive so at that point it's sort of up to you but guys i can't emphasize this enough focus focusing on the production research in the very beginning of the game is going to set you up to progress faster later on next we're going to talk about your lord talents you can see here that there are two different talent trees for your lord and you are the lord okay so basically your account these are the talents for your entire account okay as you can see here i am focused way more on the development tree than i am on the military tree why is this well for one, I'm not going to war right now, okay? So all this stuff is useless to me unless I'm gonna be fighting something. So with that being said, you might as well be focusing on development, right? It's it's exactly as it says. If you're in the early game and you're focusing on building up your castle, getting stronger and progressing faster, development of your account is what you're doing. And this is what you wanna focus on, okay? So what I've picked here are the talents that I think are the most important for leveling up and developing your account faster okay the first one is the building upgrade speed i think that's just far more important than the resource production okay because you can always gather more resources out on the map you also gain resources from events and all sorts of other stuff the building upgrade speed is crucial you get that for up to 10 percent super important next you get experience this is going to double the amount of experience that you get when fighting gnomes very critical there and i think this is more important than the other resource gathering um options you have here right next you have gold production you're gonna need a lot of gold in order to level up your dragons and and boost your mortals gold is very scarce in this game you definitely want the gold next you have divine walker this is very good especially in the early game and also for free-to-play players because this makes um three attacks cost zero ap and it gives you 50 percent more march speed which is nice so this is at least three more gnomes that you can attack every single day next i would go for leaps and bounds this is basically the same thing as the first talent except it's for research right so 10 percent uh research speed is incredible then we come here to safe and sound and this is very important and by the time you get here you're going to be pretty far into the game safe and sound basically makes it so when you're fighting gnomes your troops can't die and what this means is that you're going to be able to fight higher level gnomes every single day at least for the first six which maximizes your rewards very important you go for this finally i did do the research cost for healing seriously wounded that was my preference you can do training speed if you want uh, and as you can see here i haven't progressed past that now if you take a look at the military tree i did make a little bit of progress here and i only did that after i finished all this other stuff right you may want to skip the uh like you may want to go all the way up to safe and sound then do these first two military and then go ahead and grab safe and sound that's one thing that i would recommend um but the reason that you would want to go for either knife through butter or if you're strongest army is mostly magical damage you can go with uh rage the reason you would go with these two is because these do help you fight powerful gnomes out in the world uh and it does cost you a little bit more ap but you know it may be able to deal that extra damage that you need in order to take less wounded troops so that's important uh but beyond that you know i would only focus on the military talents 
if you're planning on going to war or if you're taking a city or something like that now the great news is that you can actually change your talents to the military talents by using the talent reset it does cost 200 gems which is definitely unfortunate um, so that's why you want to make sure that you have your talents set in the way that's going to give you the maximum amount of benefit for the most amount of time and minimize the number of times you have to go in and reset right um so that's you know that's my two cents there if you are going to war you could just reset it and set it to war you even have different pages here that you can change to so you can have a preset for development and a preset for war keep that in mind uh but this is sort of the track that i would have you guys on um if you are a new player focus on these the development track specifically next we're going to talk about the well of time okay the well of time you can find in the bottom right corner then you tap on the leftmost option and that's the well of time now these are actually battles that you're going to have to go through with your strongest troops and you're going to be able to gain some rewards that will help you boost your mortals to higher levels but there's more than just that okay there is very important buffs that that you get by clearing key milestones in the well of time okay so as you can see here uh, the first one you get is quick logging then quick quarrying then quick smelting then quick farming this first fast researching very important okay same thing with speedy construction getting to these key milestones in the well of time is going to increase the speed with which you progress your account substantially right 10 percent building upgrade speed every single building after that is huge right that's hours and hours if not days of time that you're saving just by pushing through the well of time so what i would recommend is pushing through well of time as far as you can go and get three stars because every time you get three stars on a particular level you no longer have to manually defeat that level every single day in order to beat that level i just tap the button it spends my sp automatically because it knows that i'm capable of defeating that level so i don't have to worry about it ever again finally let's talk about immortals okay now i've made videos specifically for leveling up immortals fast i've made videos on which events you should focus on in this game for the most rewards i've made videos talking about the fastest way to increase your power in this game right so if you know while this is the last tip i'm going to leave you with in this video um if you want more tips for infinity kingdom check out the channel because I go way more in depth with other specific topics over on the channel so what I would recommend in the early game to progress the fastest is focus on the water immortals right the reason that you want to do this is because you start off the game you have the ability to access very powerful back row you probably won't have Yoshi right off the bat but you will be able to get Merlin you will have to make a purchase right now if you buy the five dollar builder bundle you will I think also get Merlin immediately which is important powering him up beyond that will be you know based on your luck with the market but regardless you will start with a very powerful elite immortal by the name of Helen of Troy so Helen of Troy is the reason that you want to start with water right at the beginning you're going to get a ton of fragments of her you're going to be able to maximize her very quickly and she's very powerful she has really good synergy with Merlin because she has the chance to chill the target AOE right AOE chills you could check Merlin's skills here if the target is chilled damage is increased by 50% for his nuke which is super good but beyond that you're also going to start with the water dragon meaning you can start leveling up this dragon before you get all the other dragons for the other chapters right at the beginning of the game you also are going to be able to get Brynhild for free which is going to be a powerful front row uh, immortal that again you get really early on just by logging in every single day you're going to see her here um she's a pretty tanky front row honestly uh but she's definitely one that you can be investing in and finally Harold is a very powerful epic immortal that you can get from the arena early on so you're basically going to be trying to grab this specific setup um otherwise you know if you can't get Harold or if you don't like Brynhild you can go for Ulji in the front row you also have other back row options if you don't have Merlin such as Tamo for example she is a very easy immortal to get your hands on especially in the early game she's going to be very cheap uh uh, and so by focusing on just water what you're going to be able to do is put all of your most powerful immortals in one troop configuration they're all going to gain the five unit hp bonus as well as the other bonuses for the same unit types and what that means is you can actually go in here and you can dismantle all of the fragments for immortals that you're really not going to use for all of the immortals that are you know of a lower rarity 
of course you can dismantle them and use all of those resources that all the soul crystals that you get um, to level up skills and the tower of knowledge to make your one army even more powerful or you can use those soul crystals from immortals you're not going to use in the market to purchase mortal fragments that you will use for your water march so for example i want peter the great he's lightning but you get the point so by putting all of your resources into your water march in the early game it's going to let you progress faster through the well of time defeat stronger uh, gnomes out in the world and that's going to enable your account to progress much faster man this video was much longer than i thought it would be but hopefully if you guys are new to the game and maybe if you're playing with me in the contention of legends event now you know how you can progress your account much faster here in infinity kingdom if you found this video useful make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the video a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other infinity kingdom players might see it if you're new around here make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload an infinity kingdom video comment down below any questions that you have for me about the contention of legends event or for your infinity kingdom account i would love to help you guys out down there so make sure you go and ask there's also a link to download infinity kingdom for free in the description below so make sure you check that out there's also my social media links down there so make sure you follow me over on instagram twitter facebook discord and twitch again all that stuff always down below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace